Uh, I want to focus for the moment on the refugee issue and most particularly on uh, trafficking of survivors, refugees, particularly women and children. I met recently with a young Yazidi trafficking survivor uh, who told me about her escape, very courageous escape from systematic rape and brutality that Yazidi women and children have endured at the hands of ISIL. Uh, and it has been, the situation has been detailed by a number of the media as well. Uh, rape has been increasingly used as a tool of terrorism to destabilize communities and exert control over women and girls and communities there. And in the case of ISIL, purposely uh, to hold thousands of Yazidis, men, women, children, in captivity. So I think we should try to find a way to expand and intensify our efforts to assist these victims. Uh, let me begin, uh, Mr. Gordon, uh, by asking you what role the United States and its coalition partners should have in securing the safe release of these women and children still held by ISIL and how maybe open it to the other witnesses as well, how CENTCOM can ensure that the partner training exercises being conducted in Iraq are taking an interagency approach to this issue. Uh, Senator, thank you. I couldn't, it, it is impossible to overstate the humanitarian strategic consequences of the refugee crisis. Uh, you mentioned it in the humanitarian standpoint. There are more than 10 million displaced. Strategically, it really does threaten the neighbors, and I think some of us may be surprised that a country like Lebanon is still functioning, notwithstanding the fact that I think a quarter of its population are now Syrian refugees, uh, Syria, Jordan. Uh, we've talked about how it spills over to the U.S. Uh, and the European Union as well. We are already doing a lot. I think the United States has been a leader. I think we've provided more than $4 billion, but as you know, and I think are implying, that's not even close to uh, what is necessary. Uh, so we need to do even more. We need to lead. I think one of the arguments for America's embrace and willingness to take refugees is not just the humanitarian one, which is enormous, otherwise leaving them to their fates in the region or to a squalid refugee camp, but showing us America as a welcoming country and not anti-Muslim, I think, is a, is a big tool in this overall struggle beyond what we can do to the individuals. And then finally, comes back to the political points that we're all talking about. Whatever we can do for individual refugees is obviously hugely important, but we need to stop the, the flow. The sources of this problem that we just discussed, in response to Senator Gillibrand's question, uh, I fear too that if we don't uh, deal with those causes, we're gonna have a hearing two or three years from now on the same problem, and it's going to be many times bigger than it is now. Ambassador Crocker. Uh, thank you, Senator. Of course, the community you're talking about um, are neither Muslim nor refugees. They, they would love to be refugees because however bad that was, at least they'd be out of the hands of the Islamic State. Uh, uh, they're, they're right now captives. They are captives. They're slaves. Um, they're sex slaves. Um, it is a... Uh, a reminder uh, that Islamic State is evil. Um, and as long as it exists, as long as it holds ground, um, uh, it will use it for evil purposes, whether that is attacks into Paris, uh, planning attacks into the United States, enslavement of innocents, executions of others. Uh, they will do it. Uh, and it, uh, I, I'm grateful to you for recalling that there is a, um, there is such a thing in this world as evil. Um, Assad is evil, ISIS is evil, um, and as the chairman said in a different context earlier, we need to keep a moral compass on these things. We're America. Thank you. 